Okay, I will call a meeting to order, and as usual, it's a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we haven't uh, we haven't met in a while since we met last September with the friends, and I want to welcome Scott here. As a friend, we've kind of decided to go back and forth, but then Scott asked me to be in the friends board, so I don't have any choice in the future. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's very good. And welcome, Andrew, our, our new member to the crew here. Um, the reason I... It is an interesting meeting because um, there's a lot of changes going on with the Senior Activity Center, and one of them in the future is also going to be, and Emily's going to talk a little bit about that, is that what is the future of our commission, and how do we morph into a more supportive role for her new role in the city? So that's going to be down the road, and maybe um, with our next week with the strategic planning, that hopefully can be part of the discussion on how that's going to be. So, so we, as the, with the friends and the commission, can work hand in hand, but yet have don't cross over and bump into each other in the activities. And that's kind of where I envision our commission going. Because in the past, the commission was here to support the building. Well, now that the building is being changed in how we're doing it, and the friends are going to be a little more in the daily operations, I think that's the time to do it. Um, with that, I think the next thing on the agenda, which I hid here, Next is up Emily. is approval of minutes, actually. Oh, yeah. The approval of minutes, excuse me, thanks. Approval of minutes from, from last uh, September. Do I hear a, a motion to accept those? I move. Okay, it's moved. There's a second. There's a second. And you, okay. Okay, I hear a second. All in favor of approving the minutes, signify saying aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, we have the minutes. And now we have the Mayor's Apartment 2021. Emily, I'll turn that over to you. Sure, just welcoming Andrew as our newest member of the commission, officially. Um, and also, we are uh, supposed, not supposed to, we are, well, we're supposed to have nine commission members, and we currently have eight active members, so we have one more space to fill. Um, if there's anyone that comes to mind, obviously they have to live in the city of Sheboygan, but the mayor has asked me to think about that and maybe make a recommendation if there's anyone, but any thoughts from any of the members here? Right, so if you do just uh, email or contact Emily and mm -hmm. she'll pass it forward. Um, just a side note, I kind of asked Andrew at a local establishment in town here to be a member and I'm glad he said yes, so thank you. <laughs> Welcome. I'm just And I will, I think we all know Emily, the small group we have here, but if anyone's watching, this is Emily, and I'll let her finish up her introduction, introduction of herself. Sure. So I think most of you have heard from me either via email or in person by now or via a screen. So hello. I don't, where's the camera? Hello. Um, I've been with the city now not quite a month, started December 22nd, right before Christmas. So I'm really glad to be here. For those who aren't familiar with my background, I've bounced around the nonprofit world for the last decade or so and spent time at Lakeland University, United Way of Sheboygan County, and um, more recently, the Children's Museum. So this job feels very, um, my experience with the Children's Museum feels very applicable to this role. Um, and I'll say in a, an official capacity that I prefer spending time with seniors as opposed to spending time with small children. So I think this has all worked out in the best kind of way. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and I should say a huge population of the folks that we worked with at the Children's Museum were, of course, grandparents bringing in grandchildren to play. Um, yeah, so coming up, I think you all know that we have our strategic planning session scheduled for January 27th. So that's two week, no, one week from today, one week. And um, the homework that was sent out was due today. I know I've gotten an, a majority of responses from folks and a few people who have said, hey, I'm really new to the organization, so I'm not really sure how to answer these questions. And to that, I say that's fine. Um, 
And I think we'll have a very productive time together next week trying to figure out what happens where we go from here with our new building and new look and new everything. Not everything, but lots of new things. So any questions for me before we move on to the next item? Um, I Okay. Now it is. It, it just when you said about the meeting, we're going to we weren't going to discuss branding, and I didn't really know what mm -hmm. that meant. Sure, sure. So the intent for next week's strategic planning meeting is to focus on the mission, the values, and goals moving forward. So we we I know last time you did strategic planning, there was a lot of time spent on branding, and. This really is going to be the first step in that process. So we're not going to talk about a new name for the organization next week. It doesn't mean it's not coming. That's just not what the focus of the strategic planning session is going to be. Um, I am working on a request for proposal right now for marketing agencies to work on a rebrand. So that's going to come next. I want... I, I think Scott and I and Rich and I have talked about this, that it makes sense. I know Todd supports us to have a clear understanding of our mission and values. And maybe they don't change from what we have established already. That's fine. But it's appropriate for us to review them and set goals for our new building and moving forward. And from then, then we'll move into a rebrand. And I'll be asking folks to whether they want to participate in that or not. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because really we don't we don't need everybody involved with strategic planning to be involved. Some people don't, you know, it's not the right thing for them or yeah. It's it's gonna be a more time intensive process figuring out where we go from here in terms of brand. Thank you, Candace. That was an excellent question. Thanks. I am just gonna take some notes quick. Emily's taking notes also, so she's double dipping today. <laughs> They're paying me extra. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to put that in the notes. <laughs> I'm a very fast typist. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is just an update on where we're at with the building. So um, currently nothing is happening at the old building because of the mold Rachel and I pop in there occasionally if there's something we need to grab, but that's that's about it. And uh, checking on the few remaining live plants still over there. Um, <laughs> Sue and I were e just emailing about this. <laughs> there's one that's still in good shape, but it's bigger than I am. So I was not about to try and get it in my minivan by myself. That's like a three-person job. Um, but anyway, so we are continuing programming out of the Deland Park Shelter. That's where Rachel is right now. Um, Rachel and I are also, now that I'm here, we're also brainstorming for some new programming opportunities um, that we can do safely now while we're still surviving this pandemic. Um, but so one new thing for February is... Um, we have a speaker volunteering with the Better Business Bureau of Wisconsin who's going to do a Zoom, present, Zoom presentation on how to avoid scams. And so that'll, go, that'll be included in the newsletter that's out to print. That's new for February as a one-time thing, but my intent is to have a lecture, one lecture of sorts on various topics every month because that seemed to be something that came up in the feasibility study as an interest point. Um, and also in March, we will have for the first time a hearing aid clinic. So set up much like we have the foot care clinic where folks can sign up for a half hour appointment to get their, their feet looked at and serviced. We'll have a similar setup for a, a, a free hearing aid clinic so folks can have their hearing tested and then talk about options. Um, but of course, open to all sorts of any any ideas or suggestions. Um, we have a lot of 
a lot of availability with the Dillon Park. So there are opportunities if anyone wants to bring those forward. Um, and then in terms of the new building, Scott and I have been very busy, lots of meetings. Um, we're, I think we're in the final stages of confirming the floor plan. Of course, that's always subject to change as surprises come up. But right now, the, uh, the plan is to approach the new building um, in phases. And so phase one would include construction of the administrative space, the cafe and hospitality and lounge area, the gymnasium and the walking track, and then exterior updates. Um, as funding, as more funding becomes available, either from private donations or the city, then we will continue updating more spaces at that time. So future spaces and future phases include a game room, the art room, creative studio, and activity room, and then farther down the line, um, a flex meeting space that can be one big room or multiple small rooms, um, and also we're still pursuing a long-term tenant to, that is interested in sharing the space with us. And we have about 4,000 square feet earmarked for that. So we have one organization that's interested. We have gotten some clarification from, the, from HUD, the Housing and Urban Development, about the requirements of our tenant based on the funding that we're getting. So the requirements are, it essentially needs to be a nonprofit organization that serves, there's a few different options for the type of populations that it can serve, but essentially a nonprofit organization. So um, we're in conversations with one other organization right now and we'll see where that goes. Um, any questions about the building current plans? Sorry. We teach. <laughs> I'm slow. <laughs> Teachers can teach. We can't learn. <laughs> oh, it was red. Oh, so red is there good. There you go. There, okay. Red is good. Okay. What? What? I have two questions. What phase is the dance uh, room, and will there be mirrors on all sides? Because I'm in Tai Chi, and when you turn. Mm -hmm. It's helpful and just wondered about that. Yeah, so you can see Scott's nodding his head because we just talked about this in a meeting yesterday. As far as phases, I'm not quite sure. What we did say was that phase one, as I mentioned, um, so the, the activity studio is not included in phase one. And then once we get through that, we'll identify which rooms make sense to happen next. I, I think that'll come with knowing how we function in the space a little bit if we say, man, we really want that activity studio now, or hey, we're doing okay using the gymnasium for this, but we really need this instead. Um, but it'll be higher on the priority list than some other things. And yes, mirrors all over the place. We did have, we spent quite a bit of time talking about where we could squeeze mirrors in in that space. Bars. Thank and you. bars. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Emily, I have a question. Um, have you had any contact with the town of Sheboygan? Yes, great question. So I, before I was hired, I believe you, Rich, and Scott attended a town of Sheboygan meeting um, in December. And then shortly after I started in early January, Rachel and I attended a different meeting. Um, the town of Sheboygan has some funding available to them specifically for them earmarked that can be used in a variety of ways. One of those ways in which is to run a senior activity center or a senior center. So they are looking at starting, they're planning to start a senior center in their building on Dairyland Drive, um, north of town. And so Rachel and I were there to answer some questions and help them get through some of the easy things to understand about their project. And my understanding is that their next step is they're going to be writing their grant to use their funding to run a feasibility study to determine the needs of the town of Sheboygan um, before they get too far down the line in starting a new center. So um, we actually connected them with the same organization that did the feasibility study for the city of Sheboygan for senior needs, and I think they'll be pursuing that directly. 
And I know we talked about some shared programs along the way. Yep, that's, uh, Rachel and I shared that when they get to the point of being ready for that, that's definitely opportunities for continued conversation so we're not duplicating services. And from both an administrative standpoint and from a program standpoint, there's economies of scale that might make sense. Thanks, Emily. You betcha. Is there any more um, that you need to share, Emily, or any questions? I don't, I think I got every, any other questions from the peanut gallery? Well, hearing that, oh. oh. Questions on either the old building or the new building are fine. Sorry. How, just the question, because Sue Garski and I had about the garage where we have a lot of things stored, such as pots and decorations. How soon does that all have to be cleared out? And if it is, where should we put that stuff? Or As far as I know, there's no deadline as to how long. The city doesn't have any plans for the existing building, so there's no, there's no rush for us to move anything out of the existing building. Um, and the second part of your question is, I don't, I don't know where we could put it because we certainly don't have any storage at the new building yet. So I right. think everything is kind of fine there for now. I would say if there comes a time that you need to get in anywhere, we can do that. We just would want anyone spending any time in the area to be wearing an N95 mask while they're in the building so they're not affected by the mold. Yeah. One, one more question about that. Mm -hmm. I was going to check this, but I haven't yet. Do you know was the door fixed because it wasn't staying locked. Oh. And that was probably BE before Emily. I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah. I mean, but when I, I walk check. by, I told Sue I'd check it, but I just haven't done it yet. And I thought, well, if I could ask, I'd say me. <laughs> Which okay. door was it? Pardon? Which door was it? So there's a garage door and next to it, oh. there's a people door. I mean, you know, a regular door. So that would be on the east on, side on the, of the building, On the north right? side of that building. Oh, on the north side, okay. Yeah, where the garage door is. I was just asking. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I can check. Hello. Hello. You got questions? I have a question. Yep, can go you ahead. Hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. I, just, I may have missed this. But is there any kind of um, a, a timeline that is printed or visible, you know, in terms of you're referring to like phase one or phase two or um, is, is there something that, you know, we could refer to or that the commission could see or I could see that just has a, you know, the phases of how, how this is going and a timeline? You sure. Know, not, not that we always... Yeah, so we we have a time... To, to it may be something that I missed, I don't know. But, no, that's okay. There's a um, timeline from Growth Design Group that we're working with for designing the new building. Um, I could probably share that with the commission. Um, it doesn't speak to the future phases. Really, it's, it's focused right now on getting us in the building and getting us through the design phase and then the various construction phases um, of getting us in that building initially. We, we haven't spent a ton of time figuring out timeline for future construction of the additional spaces, I think because that's still a big question mark as to when funding will be available. But I can share the timeline from Growth Designs. Just whatever you have, I think it would be helpful. Thanks, I Jean. Add, I was gonna add, because I think her question is leading to kind of a, when do we get started on construction? And I think sometime this fall is when the construction begins. And with the, with the timeline of possibly moving into the, some parts of the facility next spring, early spring, maybe even late uh, around March, hopefully, or February, sooner the better, but that's kind of the tentative timeline for construction. Great, great, thank you. Okay. Uh, 
Just I, just take wanna, notes. I want to add one one thing too, just so the commission's up to speed a little bit. Uh, the the responsibilities of the friends are also changing in their dynamic. We haven't pinned it down totally, but we're going through the process of moving into a new building. Um, and as we've done that, the city has kind of be begun to crystallize what their expectations are from the friends financially. And so we've gone through one budget process and uh, as we've crystallized what the demands are on the friends, we're, we've got another budget that's being fine tuned by Emily. Uh, the, our finance committee met about two weeks ago and we put it together. Right now, uh, the Friends has paid roughly about $9,000 of about a $28,000 bill that we got from growth just to get the, pro get the wheels rolling, so to speak. Phase one, the work that's being done in that right now is about a $40,000 bill and the Friends is committed to picking up the tabs on that also. Going on beyond that, who knows? <laughs> but but uh, there is money coming from the friends to keep the ball rolling on from the design perspective. The city's not picking that up. But the city, when did they close? They Last closed Friday. On, they did close on the building, so that's that's an, in concrete. So that's all. I, that's my two cents worth today. I earned my keep. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. And I should say, as we're talking about budget for the new building. The city has $2.7 million budgeted, and that includes the purchase of the building and a really healthy portion of the, of the construction for this phase one. There is still a gap, and that's where the friends and I will be working on fundraising to, to help bridge that gap. Um, and other city staff are thinking creatively about finding funding for this. Um, I will say... The friends have been asked to uh, contribute the funds for the furnishings and equipment. And the initial estimate was about $180,000 for that, that the friends are prepared to fund. You might also add here as we're putting this together is as we do raise funds in the future, and Emily's taken a very active and aggressive role on that, and she's well qualified to do that. Um, the funds will be coming in and will be given to the friends. It, it, so it's a, it's a non-profit contribution. So the, the friends will have basically somewhat control of the funds coming in the door in support of this new senior activity center. Um, I, guess that's, I guess that's about it. We do have a goal for fundraising in the first year. Did you want to share that or is that a secret still? Mm, we'll let's sit on that a little bit longer. Yeah, we'll work on that a little bit longer. More, more details A little to bit more behind the research. Well, yeah. and in terms of capital campaign, yeah. we don't want to go public until we're ready. I, and I agree, so I just want to bring that up. Um, the other thing is, we, we mentioned about the friends raising money in the city, some of the city staff getting aggressively involved. We can't let the commission off the hook either. <laughs> the commission's going to have to play a role too, I believe, to some degree, in helping to raise the funds for the new senior activity center. Mm -hmm. We haven't spent a lot of time talking about a capital campaign committee, but I would love to see at least one or two volunteers from the commission and at least one or two volunteers from the Friends Board, as well as additional community members that aren't involved in either organization just in a limited time basis to help with fundraising. So I don't need that commitment right now, but something to think about. You'll be hearing from Thanks, me. Thanks, Scott. I, Thanks, Emily. Any, Oops. I have a question. Yes. Um, so, Rich, did you mention you are now on the board of the Friends? I will be. That? Yeah, I'll be. A, yeah, okay. Scott, go ahead. So that, we're so going to be. We have to bring it up for a vote. We have. Is that Hold Jean? it, Jean. Jean. Yeah, that's that's on an agenda item for our uh, friends board meeting next Wednesday, and I think it's going to be rubber stamped because Richard's Rich is a good guy, and I think he'd be very welcome to the board. But it'll be official at the end of well, next week. That that makes sense to me. I'm just asking because then that to me that is sort of cross pollinating the, the two entities and that seems to me as you're talking that that enables the commission to be uh, 
to find out what our role should be in what all of this. I, I, I agree with you totally. We have had some cross-pollination going on for many, many years. We want to keep that happening. You know, in the, in the past, I think Marilyn Montemayor was the president of the commission, yes. and she was also on the board of Friends. Recently, Laura Gum, who's on the board, was part of the commission until she moved to the town of Sheboygan and was kicked off. Kohler. <laughs> she moved to Kohler. We do have active members of the senior center um, having that voice, too. That's a that's good. A very very good point. Yep, that's right. So we're going to keep that ball rolling. And Rich has graciously said yes. I'll join the the friends board. So and I'll point out that Andrew is also a member of both now. So yeah. why we're extra glad to have him here. I guess if we cross pollinate, we'll be busy as bees, right? <laughs> you have to do double the work. So any more questions? Last year, I got approval from the Lions for $300 for, um, we were going to have a costume um, Halloween party. Well, as you know, that didn't happen, but those funds are still there, and maybe we can even get that pot to grow. Um, so in the future, if there's something creative, we can put that to use. Thank you. That sounds like a lot of fun. Okay. Any more uh, comments or questions? Okay, um, our next meeting is scheduled for March 17th. Um, I'm going to keep that flexible um, simply because we may, after our, um, our um, strategic planning, Scott and I have talked about having a joint meeting again because sometimes that, that will keep us from having to duplicate uh, information. So mm -hmm. uh, just watch your email mailboxes and... Uh, the newsletters and uh, we'll hear about the next meeting. So with that, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. Okay, and a second. Moved and second, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, Aye. thanks everyone. Uh, we'll see you in a couple months. Aye.